three, two, one. Action. How are we doing, man? I see, uh, obviously, I've seen on your social media, but we got podcasts, we got, I mean, the Goldberg documentary. I think you, you're a busy guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, podcast is just for fun, and the uh, the documentaries are what uh, what keeps the lights on. Yeah. I mean, I saw that in your eloquent uh, Twitter bio as well, which I, I appreciate. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, I'm here to uh, talk about the Goldberg documentary. So thank you again for taking the time. I always appreciate uh, kind of diving into yeah, you like the minds of yeah, you guys there who kind of put this together because uh, as I said in the uh, my initial message to you like that combination of like wrestling and like wrestling films that's kind of like a, where I really love to dive into so thank you again for that and uh, just uh, congratulations on the film as well because Goldberg kind of uh, really I think there's been stuff on Goldberg before but not quite in the depth that you've done it so I think I applaud you for what you produced I thought it was really really strong and to my knowledge, it's uh, the highest rated episode so far. So I don't know how much stock you take into something like that, but congratulations right. for that. New- news to me, but cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. I did not know that. But I mean, uh, there's a- you know. yeah, there's only been three, but I mean, still, you were the you were the highest rated one. So it said something, I guess. Yeah, that's good. I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> um, my first question. This is kind of comedic, but I, I semi serious as well. What was more of a thrill for you, watching the completed documentary or getting to learn how to shoot guns from Bill Goldberg? Oh, definitely getting the guns, shoot, learn <laughs> to shoot guns, uh, just because I had never shot a gun before. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a request of mine. It was more of a request from him. Once he really? had discovered that I had never shot a gun before, he was like, "Yeah, we're that's what we're doing tomorrow." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> all right, I guess we are." Um, you know, watching the finished film, you know, I had seen it a thousand times before I saw it on TV. So, you know, it's not, you know, I'm mostly just checking to make sure all of the uh, the last minute changes that I did got done. You know, and other than that, it's uh, you know, seen seen it seen it a lot. So definitely right. the gun. Yeah, fair enough. How, how what are they more? Is it more intricate than uh, one would expect shooting a gun? No, it's actually way too easy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, I'm not gonna get into a gun conversation. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. fine, that's fine. Yeah, no. significantly, it, it's just it's too easy. Um, yeah. yeah, if you look at the video, uh, you know, I hit the targets on the first three shots, and the targets are you know the size of a the bottom of a, a cup. So it's you know it's it's too easy. Shouldn't be. <laughs> that's probably yeah. true yeah um just want to say i mean obviously i know you're like looking into like some of the work that you've done you're a huge sports guy uh like i said on your twitter bio it's got basketball celtics uh and obviously uh from your instagram i also saw that you were once upon a time uh you were a big fan of bill goldberg which i imagine obviously you were a wrestling fan as well uh, at least once if not still still are um so you kind of really seem like in some respect the perfect person to do the bill goldberg story uh, I know obviously he's looking at your past films as well. You love, you love kind of having a lot of layers to your stories. What was it about Goldberg's that kind of like really captivated you and like drew you to the story? Cause I'm, like I said, you are a fan. So I part, I'm sure that was a part of it, but was there anything in particular that you're like, Oh, this is a really captivating story. Um, well, just to, to qualify my fandom, you know, like Goldberg is one of the wrestlers that I just remember from my childhood. I think I was like peak age at the time. So uh, he was 90, like 99, 98, you know, time period is when he was like really, really popular. Hmm. So I would have been, I don't know, 13, you know, so yeah. it's, I'm right, right, right in the target uh, age demographic yeah. there. So, you know, I remember having a stint with it, but I wasn't, I'm not some like massive wrestling fan from my childhood. Um, you know, Goldberg checks, you know, a box for me of the kind of films I like to make with a strong main character. Um, you know, and the fact that he, you know, his character, or at least from the outside before I got, you know, to know him a little bit, um, his character is him. And so I felt like, all right, that's, that's my, that's my lane. 
you know, and, and I can tell a complete arc about one person. Um, and so, you know, and then obviously once you get in there and you start learning, it's like, all right, well, the character's not really him. It's a variation of him. And that's what makes it interesting. So, you know, that's, that's, that's why I picked that one. Fair enough. I mean, that, that is definitely true. And one of the things that I, um, found, I guess you maybe found this as well and you were making it as simple as Goldberg is like in terms of, he seems like strikes me as a pretty simple person, like at heart and his character on screen is very simple. His story is very complex in some yeah. respect, like, and very almost like a contradiction in some respect as well. You might say, like, because he loved football, but he succeeded in wrestling. At one time, he didn't really maybe love wrestling, but he loved what wrestling enabled him to be. He is what wrestlers shouldn't be in terms of how they get trained and how they get brought up. He's probably not what you shouldn't do, what you shouldn't do, but he became a huge success. Like, how, how in the process, like, did you kind of? pick up on that like this is a really more complex than maybe you first imagined yeah i mean if you want to say he's a simple guy and like he likes football and sports and hanging out with his family and that those are simple things then okay fine but I, you know i think he's a complex dude from what i you know got to know um and uh it, i actually you know i would actually correct he was pretty successful in football. I mean, he made it to the NFL and played, you know, and so, yeah. and he, you know, and he went to college, you know, on a scholarship at, at a big school. So that, to me, that's, <laughs> that's pretty successful. Yeah. In football, yeah. <laughs> um, Cause not a lot of people can claim that one. So, you know, and I do think that matters in the wrestling part of this. I mean, we love what we love and that's, you know, you sort of don't have a ton of control over what that, ha how that, you know, comes to be. He loved football. He wanted to be a football player and, um, you know, he wouldn't be the first guy to jump from a sport to wrestling. No. So, you know, I think it's more of a, you know, you can extend your athletic career. I know it's not quite a sport the way, you know, professional football is, but it's still using, you know, some of that athleticism that you've spent your entire life developing and, you know, and it's, it seems like a fun way to make money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true. Was uh, like, was there anything in particular where, like, was it through conversations with him that you kind of maybe thought that this narrative is more, like I said, more to it than you first imagined? Um. Well, I, yeah. I mean, you know, in our early conversations, uh, you know, it's like I know of Bill Goldberg from watching wrestling footage, you know, and then you're talking to him on the phone, and he's talking about his kid playing baseball and you know, stuff that I talk about, you know, with my mm. kid playing football and it's like, Oh, you know, it's like, we're not that different. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? It's like, you know, he's, he's taking his kid to get training for baseball. I'm taking my kid to get training for football. It's like, there's, there's a commonality there. Um, you know, and that's, you know, and so I felt like, um, and I, and I definitely thought that the, uh, the arc back to WWE was, was pretty fascinating as far as like, you know, this guy leaves for 12 years he comes back basically so his kid can see him live and his wife can see him live. And that to me, it's like right there. That was the moment when I'm like, Oh, there's, there's, that's where you got to, first of all, that's how you got to build to yeah. um, from a storyteller perspective. And that's where all of the motivations and layers and stuff come, come from because there aren't a lot of people who would do that. I don't think, I mean, it's not like he's, you know, 30 years old when he's doing this, he's, he's pretty old and, um, and so that, you know, it's like, that's what I wanted to focus on. Yeah. That was the culmination that you're going, you're building. Yeah. 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 And it tells me a lot about who he is as a person that yeah. he would do that. So it's like, that's, you know, and, you know, and listen, I'm, you know, I'm by no means an expert on wrestling or uh, I, I've spent a lot of time around it in the last you know six months. So <laughs> yeah. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a crash course and. I understand the fandom is the fandom in a way that it's, you know, unlike any other sport, it's not a lot of casual fans. Hmm. Um, it's you're kind of all in or, or not. And, you know, and I see, you know, how people feel about Goldberg and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty binary. It's one way or the other. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm way less interested in Goldberg, the character as I am about the person, you know, and that's ultimately would all gravitate towards from a story perspective because it's like oh okay well behind this character it's like there's this whole person here and that's where i think all the the good storytelling lives mm. i mean to be fair like one of the things that you said you didn't gravitate towards wrestling so much but uh goldberg's like real life 
he, the way he is as a person and which translates to the wrestling side quite a lot as well. So I guess it's quite easy to blur the lines there as well with someone like Goldberg. Yeah, I think I think that's that's fair. Yeah. And just on a sidetrack, I mean, what did you know or didn't know about wrestling going into something like this and then now doing this and doing the Paul, Paul, Paul Heyman project as well? Uh, what have you kind of discovered about wrestling that's really struck you? Um, you know, I think I think we think of wrestling as fake, mm-hmm. um, or I think people think of it as fake, and that's sort of the like the the detractors will say, ah, wrestling's fake, and it's like, yeah, that's inaccurate. Um, I spent enough time around wrestling matches know that it's not fake; it's scripted. Like the outcomes are predetermined, but the scripted part of or the the fake part of it is not entirely accurate like you know slamming someone you know body slamming someone or jackhammering someone or like you get speared by goldberg like there's no fake way to do that you know and so like it might be like this is what's going to happen i'm going to spear you and he might know it's coming it you know so for anyone who says oh it's fake uh go get in the ring with goldberg and let him spear you (laughs) and so you know so it's like there is a physicality to it that is impressive and so with with that in mind, you know, it, it, so the deter, you know, just differentiating between scripted and fake is I think is really important because fake is fake is what we watch on TV every day. Yeah. Scripted television, scripted movies, and we buy into that. So like why not this? You know, this is sort of they got the reality show component built into it and the physical feats are mostly real. You know, Goldberg picking up a 350 pound dude over his head. Well, he's not on a rope. You know, he's not being like pulled up and, you know, he's got to be strong enough to do that and make it look realistic. So it's like, okay, you know, there's, there's that element to it um, that I didn't quite understand until I'm like, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out once you're paying attention. But um, so there's that. Um, And, you know, the other part of it I find fascinating is, you know, the, the character creation. I think that's pretty cool. Just kind of seeing how, how that stuff is done, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, these, they, WWE is a big business, so it seems to really work. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the things that I loved, like really like a lot about, like I'm um, very much about this documentary and I've heard other people's praise the same thing uh, is Goldberg's honesty and his transparency. And that's something that's quite, particularly refreshing in a wrestling documentary especially Mm -hmm. when we're we're talking about kind of the old school guys who hide things will maybe not tell the full truth those kind of things but Goldberg is full to the point he does not hide a thing like especially obviously like the whole football thing like I love football that was what I wanted to do wrestling wasn't what I wanted to do and you know when we talk about you know the wrestling fandom that can be a sensitive thing when you say, oh, I don't love wrestling. And that's perhaps what some people do pick at Goldberg uh, a little bit uh, for. But even other things about his lack of experience and, and his lack of knowledge. I mean, he's very, very honest. And, and I, like I said, fully appreciate that. And I, I don't know how you can come out of the documentary not respecting that. Was that something that was ever surprising to you, that level of honesty? And do you think like that's maybe something fans should consider a bit more as well when they look at someone like Bill Goldberg? Um, well, just to back up, you know, I do think he, he grew to love wrestling. I actually think he definitely what, did. Yeah. He definitely, I, I think that's what makes it cool is like, yeah, he yeah. didn't start out loving it and then, you know, realize, you know, all the things that it gave him and mm. that he gave to it. And, you know, and that's, that's kind of a better love story than just, you know, an automatic, you know, <laughs> no questions asked love affair with it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's earned on both sides. Yeah. So there's that, um, no, I don't. I'm not surprised by the honesty because I don't. I'm not making a film about Goldberg the wrestler. I'm making a film about Goldberg the person. Mm. And I think if you come at it from that approach, you're going to get you know honest human answers. You know, but when you ask the character questions, well, they're going to give you the answers that they've been trained to give and that kind of thing. And like their their characters say things different than the people would say. Now Goldberg has a lot of blurry lines between the two and. You know, and I'm guessing he's a little removed enough where he might give the unfiltered answer regardless. But, <laughs> you know, it was really I was really clear from the beginning with him. And, you know, and I think he appreciated it. It's like I'm making a film about you, you know, and, you know, and so and the wrestling is just a part of it. Like, I don't really care about what happens in the ring. Um, I understand that that's a piece of 
the story and it marks time and has these crescendos, but it's not about that. It's about him. So um, I think if you come at it from that perspective, well, then you're going to get different answers. Hmm. And, and do you th- do you think that's something perhaps knowing the relationship he has with fans, that's maybe something they don't look into as much the fact that how, how transparent he is and like being honest and upfront with them, but they don't maybe fully consider that when taking into account his legacy or I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I uh, you can make a doc about the wrestling fan. I, I have no, I don't really know. Fair enough, I, fair you enough. Know, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it seems like some. I mean, listen, it's like a fan for anything. It's like you can get too close to something and not have an objective viewpoint on it and whatever. And like, I think that's, you know, I'd prefer to make these films not a wrestling fan as a, not a, a non-fan, like not hmm. someone who watches Monday Night Raw every Monday because I want to come at it objectively. And it's like, I'm just trying to get, a story about a person you know wrestling is the secondary component in this film yeah you know and and it's that and that's not just because it is for goldberg it's just how i would do it anyway yeah so i mean that's probably the best case and i think that's what probably a and e maybe wants as well as they want it well the full picture if you're not gonna do that why not just watch the shows the the wrestling shows you know so it's like that's got to be different or else what do you what are we doing here fair play fair play um you kind of answered this before as well, uh, just in that last answer. Um, how hard and or easy was it to work with Bill and get him to open up and kind of be honest? Or like, maybe not honest, but get him to open up and maybe share more than perhaps he would. Because he could it does strike me as someone that may want to not fully divulge into topics if he doesn't want to. Well, Bill's not going to do anything Bill doesn't want to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think... I don't know. I mean, I, I, easy. I don't know if I can quantify it in that way because I've done stuff with Giannis and Arnold Schwarzenegger and all these people. And like, they, you know, there's a, they do a lot of media. They got a lot of people asking them questions. They got a lot of people trying to get them to give quotes and say things that'll catch them in something or whatever. And it's like, you know, I'm not there to do that. I'm there to make, to tell a story about them and, it's their story. It's not mine. So, you know, it, it, I mean, it comes down to trust and it's a little bit of a shotgun wedding and that like, it's like, all right, I'm the director. Hey, you know, this is me. And you're the, you know, you're the person I'm making the film about. It's not like he picked me. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sure he could have, I'm sure he had say if he wanted it, but the, I don't think he gets involved like that. Um, so it's, it's, you got to earn trust. That's really at the end of the day. And a lot of it doesn't get <laughs> it you don't find out, you know, he, he's got to take a leap of faith of like, all right, this guy's going to make me, you know, he's going to tell my story and do it justice. And you don't find out till it's airs. So that's a, that's a big, you know, that's a I, I get it. It's like, I'd be hesitant to do that too. Yeah. I, I mean, was I... hesitant to do this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Appreciate that. I'm joking. Um, how, I know he did say he watched, parts of it because he doesn't love watching his own stuff but nah, he watched the whole he watched the whole thing when it aired oh did i would say how what did he say did he yeah he, he loved he loved it oh amazing. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna share specifics but no he, that's fine, that's he, fine. He, he was happy that's cool no no i'm yeah. I, it's always which, nice which is how i keep score i don't yeah. you know it's like fans and highest rated it's like that's why i don't even know that stuff it's like if bill liked it then i win and i'm good that's it that's all i care about yeah that's awesome yeah and i think probably the healthiest approach for you as well yeah <laughs> You did talk about obviously not wanting to um, dive too much into the wrestling, but one thing you do do, and and I know this has a big impact on Bill personally as well. And one thing that's never really been touched before in any documentary or any really story about Bill, I don't think in great detail, not to my knowledge at least, is the Bret Hart incident. That was something that has kind of either been skewed around or just never really fully focused on uh, in, in a lot of other stories. How imperative was that to this story? Because it really does have a lot of knock-on effect on perhaps Bill's own relationship with wrestling, how people perceived him. Like, how how was that? How important was that for you for this story? Well, I feel like it'd be weird to not do it. Yeah, no, so I agree. You, got, I agree. you have you have to do it, um, and then you know you just you know you try to draw conclusions from it, and you know I, I mean. I, the reality is i feel like i talk about it everywhere honestly anytime i looked this up i felt like i could find bret hart giving a quote or somebody giving a quote about it so um 
you know, the, the moment by moment dissection of the match itself and seeing it and that kind of thing, like, all right, like you have the real estate to do that kind of thing. So it feels like you want to do that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it happened, so you got to do it. Uh, and, and it's a moment. And I think an important moment, it's obviously an important moment for Bret Hart. So. Yeah. Did, did you um, find that? I mean, I appreciate you also that you gave kind of both sides to the story. There isn't like a leaning one way or the other. You just kind of let it present itself. And obviously people can make up any, uh, make their own opinions, I guess you could say. Um, did you, do you find that you stood a certain way, like in terms of like, oh, like it wasn't, I mean, it was obviously Bill did it, but it wasn't his fault. He didn't attend to maybe like, did you find that you had an opinion at the end of it, like of the situation? It- Here's what I'll say. I don't know enough about wrestling to know what's right and wrong and how trained people should be and, the, and, and like what the like actual like proper way to do these things are. As a sports fan, what I do know is people get hurt. Yeah. You, you do something physical, injuries happen sometimes way worse than that, sometimes not as bad. Um, and I just think that like I can't imagine, again, wrestling fans can correct me who know the sport better than I do. Um, but from the people I talk to and just my sports knowledge in general, like when you sign up for that kind of thing, like you're signing up for the potential for injury, you know, it's going to happen. Um, and it's inevitable. Now you hope that nothing catastrophic happens and you hope that nothing like that happens, but it, it can, I, I feel like that. I don't, I don't know that anyone would disagree with that. Um, yeah. You know, I think the I think the the thing that matters in that scene to me is I don't there's no part of me that believes Bill Goldberg tried to hurt Bret Hart. And I think I think intent is the only thing that really matters because injuries yeah. can happen in in the flukiest ways. Even if, you know, whether it be fluky, whether it be a direct whatever, like, you know, but I think for but there's no way that Bill Goldberg tried to hurt bret hart first and foremost look at the two people (laughs) if it were a real fight yeah we know who would get hurt so you know if bill goldberg tried to hurt bret hart bret hart would have gotten really hurt so there's there's that you know and like i know in the film he's like you know uh, he would have had to run the match he would have been on his own it's like nah, it's even simpler than that if he tried to hurt bret hart bret hart wouldn't have got up yeah you know there's a physicality (laughs) difference there yeah um you know and so there's that um, but it just feels like he's, I, I, I spent enough time with him. No, he's not trying to hurt people, you know? And yeah. so, you know, it's an accident and, you know, I think Bret Hart has the right to be pissed off about it. And I think Bill, you know, is, you know, he didn't do anything malicious or wrong, you know? And I think the wrong in, in air quotes is if he was, if there was intent, then okay. There clearly wasn't. So then it's an accident. Um, and, and, the, and I leave the specifics and the blame game and whoever to people who are smarter than me about this particular thing. No, I, th- I, to be fair, I don't think there is a full right or wrong. I mean, like I said, Bill didn't, I think how you've summarized it is how I would go about it as well. Like yeah. it, it can happen. And obviously he didn't mean it. Yeah. Um, so I, so kudos to you for how you handled it as well. I think, I think it was really good. Um, just wanted to ask also, like, was there ever a plan and I guess in some respect, you may have answered this already, but was there ever a plan to talk about his most recent series of uh, matches or work in WWE that he did before he, before this documentary aired, I guess you could say, like the last maybe two years or so, because he did have some interesting events there. I No, there was, there was never a plan for that. Um, you know, I wanted to build towards the comeback and that was it. Um there was no, I was never going to go past that. No, that's fair. And to be fair, in fairness, like I said, it, it culminates uh, in, in a full circle journey as yeah. you wanted it. So it, it works. So that's fair enough. Um, yeah. I mean, you have to draw a line somewhere and say, I mean, he could still, I guess he could still have matches now. So it's like, where does that line stop? So it's like, yeah. this is, this is the clear line. It's the comeback to me. No. Th- yeah. That, that, that makes, yeah. Just from a narrative standpoint, it makes perfect yeah. sense. Uh, one thing I will say, and maybe you talked about this with him uh, off uh, camera, or maybe even during while you were filming, but it didn't make the final cut. The Longest Yard. Did you ever actually talk about that film with him in uh, any length of like any length of time? Because that's a really interesting project. Because he was a football player in that film, and in some respect, it kind of gave him 
a spotlight being what he was, you know, what he is at heart. And it was kind of a really cool project. Did, did that ever come up? Would you ever divulge into that kind of work? Um, I mean, we generally like some of his acting and stuff that happens outside of wrestling, mm. um, you know, but specific to the longest yard, not not really. I mean, we mentioned he mentioned it, but it's yeah. not like, you know, we weren't I wasn't asking him like what it was like on set or anything like that. Yeah. Did you talk about just his film work in general very much? Yeah, yeah. yeah just you know, I mean, how wrestling can be a springboard to other things and whatever. I mean, you know, I wanted to somehow get his cars in there and that mm-hmm. didn't happen either. So <laughs> that's right. Maybe uh, extras that could be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um and uh, just finally uh, you again you've you t- touched on this again do you think he will knowing and like knowing how like the what like how you know him now after working with him do you foresee that he will wrestle again or I have no idea no idea no idea no i mean idea. No, 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 even if i of, even if i knew i wouldn't say <laughs> no not in terms of if you asked him or not but just your gut feeling or do you think he, he'll do it again before it's all said and done uh i it would i have no idea i really don't um i don't know that's right yeah, yeah no no not the, not not a great answer but it's, <laughs> it's 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 the only honest one i can give you i have no i have no clue that's no that's more than yeah. that um just actually just sorry one final bonus question this is more on something that you didn't i this is not the goldberg and related but the paul Heyman project is there anything you can share about that because i saw that on your instagram and it's uh seems very interesting I, I can't answer. I can't share anything about that. Yeah. Is there is there a particular maybe timeline of when that might come to fruition? I can't, I can't answer that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say just purely out of curiosity because it seems like a really interesting project. So uh, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, but again, just uh, thank you so much again for the, for doing this, Ross. I, I do really, yeah. really appreciate it and uh, hope it was all right for you. I know you didn't want to do it, but... <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> fine. And, and, and I've got things coming up that I'm sure we'll do this again. Yeah, no, a bit, uh, but I, I look forward to it. And again, thank you again for your time. I always appreciate it. Uh-